welcome to When Calls the Hallmarkies. This is a show where we're recapping season nine of When Calls the Heart. And it's so much fun. This is the finale uh, that we're talking about in the season as a whole. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Caroline is here. Hey, y'all. And Ruth is here. Hi. And we have a special guest with us today. We have Mary Richards is here. Mary, this is your first time on the podcast. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about how you got, uh, became a hardy. Yeah. So I've listened to your podcast for so long and for some of the other movies and shows. And then I thought I got to try this one calls the heart because my mom liked it. And then I became mom <laughs> with children growing up and I wanted something kind of safe to watch, you know, as they're around. And then I got so hooked you guys it's almost embarrassing but uh, you know i'm i'm among friends this is a safe place where i can admit that i am a true hearty and i've just been you know started tweeting about it recently and and that's kind of how we connected rachel yeah. over twitter i've been following you for a while and, and hallmarkies <laughs> gals and i just I, it's just so much to talk about i can't wait to dive in well i saw you tweeting about how you did a, you do a, every sunday night a podcast of one to your husband about one hearts <laughs> it's a live podcast every sunday evening and i just spill all my thoughts to him and he falls asleep to it so Thanks. nice nice good listening <laughs> i think that's a relationship goals there there yep. he is I really do. Somebody will just listen to you talk whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> he started, in fact, I just watched the, the Top Gun came on TV again. And so we watched it together and he's like, all right, uh -huh. go onto your websites and tell me all the trivia as I fall asleep. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's my love language. Just talking about, did you know? So that's what I love well, to do. I'm honored to uh, to have you on the podcast and uh, to say you're a fan of the podcast because you are in uh, media yourself, correct? I am. I'm a journalist in Salt Lake City. I worked for 19 years at KSL Radio, and now I write for the Church News, which is a division of the Desert News newspaper. And we've got a lot of podcasts on our slate as well, but I always have to make time. As soon as yours pops on my phone, I'm like, time to listen. I need this in my life. It's so good. That makes me so happy. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's dive in to episode, uh, episode 12 of uh season nine this is the finale and uh rock rocky uh by baby is the title and uh we have lots going on with lee and rosemary and gallon coming back and we are getting another love triangle <laughs> no uh, this time two women and nathan uh so we're gonna talk about all of that but uh, Caroline, why don't you start? What did you overall think about the finale? I say this every time. Um, it's like, it was my favorite finale since like Chris and Kevin have come on since season six. Like I, I love this finale and um, everything about it. Like the, the bromance that's gonna be starting, I hope. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I just love that. And just everything I wanted happened, so. It makes me happy, except for the triangle. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ruth? What do you think overall? Uh, it was, there was no cliffhanger. So, I mean, how, and and there was no cliffhanger. There was no wedding this season. So um, I'm a little bit disappointed in both of that. But because I kind of like there being, um, I like there being, I, I will be honest, I do like there being a little bit of a cliffhanger and I didn't really, I feel there, I know there's still things to be resolved, but I didn't feel like there was much. And um, I also missed out on there being the wedding this season. I don't understand. So, so th those are, those are my minor complaints. I mean, other than that, it was, it was, it was good. I'm not going to say it was my favorite finale by any means, but it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say probably the biggest cliffhanger is either the love triangle or Bill in his mm -hmm. like health, I think, with and him Henry, giving, right? Because yeah, what will happen with Henry? Mm -hmm. uh, being because Bill gives his uh, will to Elizabeth and he's coughing up blood. Mm -hmm. I said that before that mm, that's usually a bad sign mm -hmm. <laughs> for our characters. Uh, but Mary, what did you think overall of the of this finale? 
So overall, I loved it because I've been Team Lucas since the beginning. Yeah. So I feel bad because I went outside to talk to my neighbor and dear friend, and she's been Team Nathan, and she was oh, like, "Oh no, she's you know," and she given up hope for him at the end of the last um, season. You know when we finally see the moment between Lucas and Elizabeth on the bridge. But I loved this one because I felt like they finally they weren't going to drag it out another season. Like, yes, we're going to resolve this couple. They are in a safe, good place, you know, solid. I really like that about it. But yeah, like Ruth said, there were a couple of things that seemed a little unresolved that maybe were cliffhanger ish. They could either be cleared up really fast in the first episode of the next season, or maybe they could kind of continue them on. It kind of remains to be seen. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like really Lee and Rosemary have become almost as core central mm-hmm. focus of the show as anything with Elizabeth. Would you all agree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that was so satisfying. Uh, mm-hmm. in yeah. this whole plot with, uh, with her wondering if, she, if she's pregnant and then faith her, uh, them sneaking into faith's office That's and getting so that good. book was funny. <laughs> and then, covering your ears for patient confidentiality yeah yeah that was, I was so laughing good. so hard <laughs> and then she's they see she sees them reading this book and she's like i have that same book in my office i thought that was funny <laughs> yeah i i read up and you uh you mary and ruth can uh can elaborate on this but what i read was that the quickening quote unquote that usually happens between 16 and 25 weeks of pregnancy. That if it says, if this is your first pregnancy, you may not feel your baby move until closer to 25 weeks. So she could be very pregnant at this point. Not with that waste. No. <laughs> that was the majority of my live podcast to my husband Sunday night. I was like, do you remember when I was having our five babies, how all of a sudden I would just, I just grew, like it just happened. That seems yeah. to be something that Faith left out of the conversation. The next step for you will be that you will gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, in the uh, in the beginning, you're, like your first pregnancy though, is in it usually uh, you don't get as big, and then it grows. That's true. The more, you, That's more true. kids you have, and there are some women who carry differently, and there are lots of different things we could go into about different but, times of pregnancy. <laughs> but yeah, those corsets and those super. I mean, I'm always amazed yeah, at yeah. how tiny pascal's waist is i mean it is yeah. just you could put your fingers around it and i mean yeah. it's so it's it's amazing <laughs> yeah but <laughs> yeah well well i think with 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 my daughter at three months was when i first felt her, her move so, mm-hmm. and, and you know and, i think i did too like around 12 13 weeks or so yeah yeah, yeah that tiny and i do i mean mm-hmm. I knew that's what, and even though according to all the statistics, it was like, well, it couldn't be that I knew it was, there was no Mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's true. She could be about that far along and still be kind of Mm -hmm. smaller. I did with one of my babies, same thing. It was that it was, it's, it's like a butterfly. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's so thrilling. I had cried in that Mm -hmm. moment because I knew exactly how she felt like there's a baby. So yeah. Well, and especially if you've been somebody struggling with infertility, you, you don't want to allow yourself, I would imagine to kind of hope that get your hopes up and then for something to happen or end up just being, you know, something else or, or whatever. And so I can, I, I can understand why you'd want to be hesitant, kind of like Rosemary is. My mom was like that. Um, cause she had three miscarriages. And um, then she found out she was having triplets. And so it's like, she didn't want to tell anybody at first just because, you know, she, they were yeah. worried about a miscarriage. And then they got to a certain point where like, well, first of all, she, you could tell she was pregnant, obviously, but it was safe to tell. So like my, my mom cried with um, past, I, seeing Rosie's reaction because she's like, I understand that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When she told your dad that she was having triplets, did he? um the, you know they were at the doctor's office and um they said oh we see two babies and there's like no and my mom thought it was a twin baby and then they said no I see three babies and my dad passed out <laughs> so he didn't pull a lee and run around screaming no no three babies no he, my mom said the first thing he said was college 
Oh, that was the first. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So in hmm. the beginning, we we find out or or Rosemary finds out about the whole thing with Gilchrist and Lee, and uh, it was a pretty like for one calls the heart. It was like a slightly racy thing i thought to have this bedroom scene <laughs> we, we've never had anything like that on the show in my memory is that right when rosie was sick but like she was sick so obviously like um lee wasn't in the bed with her but that was like the first time i think we've seen a couple yeah mm-hmm. yeah that, that was a little bit surprising to me especially because it feels like they've kind of gone more sort of wholesome these last two seasons with John Tinker. So not that there was anything wrong with it. I, it was just a little surprising to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. like, oh, a nice, nice nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only other scene I can remember is remember when Jack was unconscious for a day or two and he was laying in a bed, but then Elizabeth was sitting beside him. It wasn't like, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's the only other time I can remember. Yeah. I was surprised by that too. I also kept thinking it was full daylight. I kept laughing about the the sunlight through the windows right <laughs> but, but i guess uh, you know so elizabeth doesn't read her letter that lucas left her he's off camping he's doing his whole thorough thing did um, you see with- the wood chopping yes <laughs> i thought of you immediately caroline everyone everyone on twitter is like caroline look <laughs> i see <laughs> that was funny yeah. i couldn't not read it i just couldn't i would have to read it i couldn't mm. not i don't know mm-hmm. what do you think ruth would you be, have self-control of elizabeth i'd read it why not yeah, yeah. i would just want to know i don't know what he said i know i mean i've been married 19 years and i still read the letter even though i think <laughs> i know my husband kind of well and yeah. yeah open the letter that was that was confusing yeah I do love how concerned Gustav was about the whole thing. Yeah. That was, that was cute. Oh my God. Softy. They let Gustav out of the, uh, out of the saloon. (laughs) He never gets out of the, can we have a backstory for him? And it could be like a side series because I have so many questions about him. Well, yeah, we've been joking that uh, he's imprisoned in the saloon. (laughs) You never see him anywhere else in town. He, he got in Elizabeth's house quicker than Lucas did. So yeah, that, really did. that's funny. Yeah. And, uh, so then Gowan turns himself in mm-hmm. and the whole, uh, the whole town cheers for him, which was very sweet. It was very nice. I did think it was funny that he turned himself in and like the, the um, what did they call it? The um, prison or the... Um, no, the um, they just they brought him in. The Mounties brought him in. Yeah, and, and like said, that prison yeah, carrot, the carriage yeah, thing. Yeah. Oh, the prison transfer. Was, yeah, transfer. Yeah, I thought that was just cute. That cute that he turned himself in. Like yeah. that, that's not something Gowan would have done seasons mm-hmm. ago. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I you do wonder how he got a hold of all of that uh, dynamite. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. True. Uh-huh. That would take a lot. I would take I, a lot to destroy I, a whole mine. Yeah, but and uh, I also liked how he'd made friends with the Mountie who was bringing him in. Like, yeah, and yeah Bill's like, was <clears throat> <throat> <throat> yeah. like professionalism, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. It was the most Hope Valley arrest and double felony in history, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we get this conversation between Allie and Elizabeth, with Allie asking Elizabeth to help her find. A, a someone for nathan to marry which... that was funny <laughs> yeah to each their own when talking about <laughs> wanting her and nathan oh my that was so good yeah it made me laugh and yeah macy returns and then faith also admits that to molly that she has feelings for nathan but she feels it's unethical to have a relationship with a patient and i feel like this is a little bit ridiculous because literally the whole town there's no other doctors so is she not gonna have any relationships <laughs> she has to go out of town in order to find a, a yeah a husband I mean, hills or yeah, yeah. mail order husband how's she gonna date anybody yeah so i mean that seems a little a little harsh to me for uh uh for faith to 
I don't know if I would accept the same code of ethics that she seems to be under, but yeah. I, I don't and then know. she saw, and, and she saw May and Nathan and she, she looked kind of like, uh, oh, maybe they really have that spark. I don't, mm -hmm. that's how I took it. I mean, when, when she, she and Molly saw, um, Nathan and May talking. Yeah. yeah, she looked a little, was it relieved? Did she say she felt something yeah. like that? Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was, she's such an interesting character. I haven't been able to figure out. And I know it's because the actress, remember how she was had a baby? So she was kind of written out for a little bit and came back in. So there's been these like moments where I'm like, wait, I can't quite figure Faith out and what she wants. And because of the other, like Carson then leaving the show then affected her character too. And so... Mm -hmm trying to figure out who she is and what she wants has been tricky for me. And that yeah. love triangle, it looked like they were building up to kind of one leg of it just might've fizzled out there. Mm. Yeah, Ruth, what do you think about this love triangle between May Sue, Faith um, and Nathan? I don't really know. I, <laughs> I'm, I don't know. Faith has had so many love interests throughout the course of this series. Um, and then what about Hickam? I mean, I thought she was starting yeah. to have, and so I'm not sure. Now it's like first, first you thought she might be might be interested in Nathan, and then you saw her interested in Hickam, but then Hickam's interested in Fiona, but he, but and then now she's all of a sudden interested again in Nathan, and I and I just I don't know I. I, I personally think Faith has just got to figure out herself. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think she's quite figured out who she is yet. I feel like she's starting to, but maybe she just needs to like swear off any guys for a while and just focus on herself and, and not, I, I don't want to see her pushing to go go and have to be with somebody she doesn't have to be with anybody but yeah. just you know if maybe maybe she should just uh go go out with all the men and all the all the unmarried men in the town <laughs> go out once in a while and just have have dinner and then just enjoy being doing that i don't know i actually feel like she's a better fit for hickam than either they had her with jack for a little they had her yeah. with yeah. the carson and with with Nathan, they could keep putting her with these kind of mounty types, these. Yeah. And I, I feel like she'd be a better match for somebody with the, just like a, a little bit of nerd in them. Yeah. I <laughs> I mean, agree. And I, I get agree. that with Hickam, you know, somebody that's yeah. kind of cute and, and, uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's a better fit for Nathan with May Sue than yes. with faith. Yeah. yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. The Heartland TV show on Up, Faith, and Family. Fans of the hit family drama Heartland know that Up, Faith, and Family is the only place to stream every season of Heartland, including behind-the-scenes exclusive content. All 15 seasons of Heartland are available and ready to binge only in Up, Faith, and Family. And if you love Heartland, then you will love the dramatic new series Mystic. Escape into a world of mysterious adventure, mystifying secrets, and magical moments as we follow a group of horse-loving teens who are regulars at their local stables on the fictional peninsula of Calvary Point, New Zealand. First three episodes of Mystic are now available to stream with a new episode every Thursday. Go to upfaithandfamily.com forward slash hallmarkies today to sign up for your 14-day free trial. That's up faithandfamily.com slash hallmarkies. I wanted Hickam and Faith for the longest time. So I'm for I'm with you. Because okay, poor good. Hickam, he he needs a, a girl. Like bless he his does. heart. Like he's been yeah. here the longest and yeah. he needs to find somebody. And I just love mm -hmm. Ben. And yeah. um, so yeah. he needs a romance. I think yeah. it would be cute. But I Faith did ask Elizabeth to find her a mountie and um that christmas movie so but not yeah. nathan i don't Another know I, just, um, I feel like we need the nerd factor for faith mm -hmm. I, I just i really do what do you think mary 
I'm trying to look up the name of that guy who was on a couple seasons ago, and he seemed to be kind of getting along really well with Fiona. Clayton, what's the actor's name? Clayton Chitty. You remember that guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring He's him back. very handsome. Clay, yeah, right? yeah, he goes by Clayton. He goes by Clayton James now. He's that's changed. right. He's, yeah, I could they bring? I mean, I know he, I've seen him in some blacksmith. other movies. And I, is it the blacksmith? Yes. Okay. Yeah. See them together, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was his name. Mm -hmm. Or another Mountie. I mean, the town seems to be growing. They could bring in um, another Mountie. <laughs> There's so many possibilities. <laughs> I mean, they should just have Arthur Gilchrist stay and oh, just yes. starts that's what to get to know needs. Faith. Yeah. That's There's our really character. Yes. That would be great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can totally <laughs> see that. Yeah. They both have great hair. Oh, uh, yes. They do. <laughs> I interviewed Matthew James Dowden. That will be yeah. coming, so look for it. Uh, mm. He had told he told me that he wasn't going to be in the finale. That's why I didn't, uh, I, I didn't mm. post it on Monday. I decided to wait. Uh, but... Um, but yeah, I, I think they could have done a little bit more even with his character and oh, maybe yeah. we'll see him again. I think that could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> bring, bring him back. Actually, he and Fiona would be a really good match too. Yeah. 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 Definitely. yeah. She's a little bit prickly toward him, but then I can't tell if that's, you know, one of those like great tropes in relationships that start out all prickly, but then they really, you know, mm -hmm. so let's see where it goes for sure. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Hickam, I don't really like the fact that they're making him resign no. as mayor. You're here. I agree. We all agree I was on so that. Mad. So mad. I, I like, yelled out at the TV. I campaigned <laughs> for this for the longest time. Yeah. And yeah I, I finally made a got my wish. <laughs> I know. I, I, know. I just, I, he hasn't, there's no reason. And so it just kind of, right. I mean, he just had the big success of the Hope Valley days. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, are they just doing it to put Bill back in? I, I don't I really, know. Bill was great as the judge. We don't need him to be the mayor. Mm -mm. Maybe, maybe the saloon, maybe something happens with the saloon later and then Lucas can become mayor. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I just liked Hickam as mayor. It was fun. I, know, I, did, too. I did too. I, I did too. Watched. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching where he's come through the series. I just thought, oh, this yeah. guy is so good. It makes me yeah. think, do they think we don't like Hickam? I think they, oh. I think they know that we love Hickam. I think they all do. Yeah. With any of your intel, Rachel, have you heard anything about Abigail? Because you'll see her, you'll hear her name pop up. Yeah. You know, what do you I mean? I don't have any more in intel than anybody else, but mm -hmm. I just think it's not going to happen because no, no. I just, just after when they announced that she was coming to when hope calls the hallmark, not even just like the, the crown media people, like the hallmark card people yeah. put out a statement saying that it wasn't, they have nothing to do with it. They were not having nothing right. to do with, with, uh, Lori. And right. so if, if they had any plans to bring her on to yeah. when calls the heart, they would not have done that. Oh, I agree. Gotcha. So yeah. I just, don't see that happening i i she might come to if they do decide which i don't think they are going to do when hope calls i think they would have done it by now yeah if they were going to do it um because it just didn't get the numbers that i think they thought they would um but it, she could go back there i could imagine that happening yeah I could. Mm -hmm. and I i'm actually so kind of surprised that we haven't heard an exclusive deal between Lori laughlin and gac in all oh, these announcements too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else does she have to do? I mean, mm -hmm. and they love her. Bill is a great friend of her. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of surprised they haven't done that yet. Me too. But yeah. that's all that, I mean, I have literally no insider information. So. Uh, just thought I'd ask since I, yeah. I'm here with you. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know, Hallmark. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I uh, that was more at the beginning of the season that we got some of that, and now I feel like now Minnie has like fully bought. They have the cafe, the the uh, Joseph and Minnie are like fully entrenched in mm -hmm. the, kind of her spot. So yeah, another great solid couple, like you said. Mm -hmm. I, I love, love their storylines. Yeah, yeah, that was really cute with them with the um the windy picnic and everything. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. fun. And my husband, he's watching it with me he's like do you do you want to do that i was like well no it's windy but that's really cute yeah 
Mm-hmm. And they're just so cute together. Like the, the actors, like they watch together. I'm like, this is so cute that they, mm-hmm. they do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got a great chemistry. Mm-hmm. I also liked the whole scene with Joseph praying with Gallen. Yeah. Oh, that was a really nice that. scene. I love that. Mm-hmm. That, in fact, I will say that was, and I'm, I'm sure most people would agree with me, that was my favorite scene in the finale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was one of my favorites. It was really I mean, well for done. Me. For me. Yeah. Whenever he dropped his, like, his knees, I'm like, Yes. Martin yes. Martin yes. did amazing yes. in that scene. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's always he's always good as Gowan, of course. Yeah, like, but that really that hit you. Yeah, because mm-hmm. nobody could really claim that's like preachy or whatever it might be. It was just two people living their lives, and that's what mm-hmm. you want in these kinds of things. It wasn't there wasn't some kind of like miracle or screaming up the skies or, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you get in faith-based programming. This was just Mm -hmm. a a sweet moment between two friends. Yeah. It was very humble. Yeah. Yeah. Just that, Mm -hmm. that humble everyday kind of plea and, you know, um, but a lot of faith filled people in America and, and, or uh, all around Canada that watch, I think resonated with that because they feel that too, that kind of urge to, to reach out to to a god and ask you know do you do you know me how can i get through this and what what a journey for gowan in that moment i thought this man he do they do emmys for this show <laughs> it's so good mm-hmm. yeah it's a great arc yeah martin has been one of the best actors i think on the show Absolutely. throughout i agree mm-hmm. yeah. totally We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Then we have the fire at the saloon and it is pretty sad when Lucas is like, the dart is gone. I know. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, <laughs> and uh, then this is when Bill, uh, Bill gives the will to Elizabeth and I do feel like he's not long for this, for this world. What do you? What do you think? Is it consumption or, you know, or yeah. tuberculosis? Like I feel like, is it tuberculosis where you, where you cough so. the blood? I don't, I don't know. know. One of those. It's right around the walking? time of the Spanish flu, if they were going on history. Mm. Some sort of walking pneumonia or. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that yeah. moment does what this show does so well. They mix in that humor and that lightness and that lovely moment when he's with the juice and joking about it. And then mm-hmm. little Jack comes down. Oh, where, where yeah, that was says, cute. Yeah. Oh, it was so cute. All of that mixed in with this moment of him pushing the will across the table and tears immediately come to her eyes. I just think this show does this so well. You know, these, mm-hmm. these emotions all packed into that scene. I mean, a pair. And apparently it wasn't supposed to be as emotional, but like mm. Jack brought that emotion from an interview I saw them do at the beginning of the season. And um, they said that everyone was like getting teary eyed. Mm-hmm. So, Do you think that they'll do a Christmas movie? I mean, none of us have any idea, but just speculation. Do you think they will, Caroline? I, not with John Tinker as mm. the showrun. He He said many times that he likes episodes, like episodes because christmas movie it really doesn't move the story much Mm -hmm. so it's easier to write for 12 episodes than for a christmas movie and 10 episodes that's too bad that's one of the best parts of Mm -hmm. i think personally 
Um, but they they did bring the Christmas this year though. They did, yeah. Mm-hmm. They did, yeah, yeah. Which was the best episode of this. We'll talk about the whole season as, but in my opinion, that was the best episode mm-hmm. of the season. Um, so May says, you know, I didn't mean to mislead you. And then she goes riding with Allie. And uh, so, uh, did you, did you feel like they were tipping their hat any more towards Nathan with May or Na- Nathan with Faith? What do you think, Mary? Probably, I. well, my gut wants him to go with May Sue. So I think I was looking for that. I was, mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to read into that moment. Like, okay, they're going to, they're going to have him with her. Um, but I've, but Faith is such a long time town member and, the you know, so that if we want some, some solid kind of backing, you know, we've already talked about Faith, but, but I know, I feel like they were kind of, I think I can see Nathan and Macy together. They have kind of that flirty spark, you know? He looked happy to see her though he didn't hug her or anything they're kind of standing there in the street like mm-hmm. well you know so i don't know i don't know i'm intrigued yeah uh it i i want to say that they're tipping their hat to faith a little bit more yeah mm. but it's hard to say because she's been gone the last bunch of episodes may's been gone a bunch of episodes uh i don't did you feel one way or the other uh caroline like I want May so like I think I see more with May um but if, if it was between May Faith or Fiona I would pick either Faith or May I can't mm-hmm. see him with Fiona yeah. at all yeah. and um so if it had to be the between two people I'm glad it's mm-hmm. Faith and May it's definitely so. the most chemistry, but I was just kind of laughing. I was like, no way. They're not doing this. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin can have Poor chemistry hearties. with any, he can have chemistry with anybody. So like I blame it on him in his <laughs> hard eyes that he, yeah. he sends yeah. out. So. Those blue eyes will get you every yeah. time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we also have Rosemary refusing to decide not to publish the story about, um, about Henry and everything and I have thoughts about that as a journalist yeah what do you think Mary so uh, I was intrigued by that moment because it harkens back to a couple of episodes ago when she does publish something against Elizabeth's wishes because Mm -hmm. she says Mm -hmm. no as a journalist and ethics I need to do this and then in that moment I'm thinking is she going to do that again there's like just a pause and then she just rips the paper out of the, the typewriter just crumples it up and I thought what I love that I love that as a journalist because she she had that moment where she thought, what is um, what's the ethical thing to do here? And here we have a man who says, I I don't want to be in a story. I don't want to be the focus of this. And she says, okay. She trusted that. She trusted her friend Elizabeth. And I just I loved that as a journalist because sometimes in our newsrooms we kind of think, no, push the story, get it out there, get it on the front page, beat the competition. And this is a man's life we're talking about and his reputation and his character and and then elizabeth asking for that showed that trust you know that um Mm -hmm. they just had in each other it was that uh, that was a great moment Mm -hmm. the only thing that i would maybe be tempted by and i guess it's just a one newspaper town but i would be tempted by like i know i can tell the story in the most fair way and then if somebody else and not want to leave it up to somebody else who's going to do a bad job, that would be my only kind of temptation of like, let's get it. I taught, but maybe the, the, the way I would try to handle it is to explain that to Henry and say, uh, you know, I really think we should get ahead of this, but yeah. I, that's probably because I'm coming from a modern perspective where it's all going to be online and it's all going to, you know, it, within minutes. So you might as well kind of take charge yeah <laughs> that's a good point because didn't they mention the the benson beagle i think was on mm-hmm. the story yeah. she said that. and she could say you know with our knowledge of it right here in our town we can give this more context and yeah. have this truer account so yeah i see what you're saying that's true mm-hmm. it's kind of like in legally blonde when l woods won't give the alibi yeah <laughs> like, she's like no i won't do it it's kind of how i felt with rosemary <laughs> And I, I and I love that they, it was with Elizabeth asking like for Henry, and it was Elizabeth and Lucas's story. I like, get the whenever the um the thing happened with the mind. So I, mm-hmm. I like that it came back around, like and it showed her growth 
like Rosie's growth. Like the yeah. paper is important, but it's not import- important over friends in town. So I like that. Yeah. And uh, Florence apologized to Henry, which I thought was a really nice moment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she did read Lee. And I, I think the I think Loretta is one of the better actors too, as well in the cast. She's great. She also had that accent too. So that's know, even more amazing. impressive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then last we have Rosemary uh, telling Lee about the fluttering oh. and him being all uh, Ebenezer Scrooge on Christmas morning. You know, <laughs> the windows. <laughs> there's still time they did it all in one day you know kind of thing that's how it felt to me and uh, he's so excited and happy and uh screaming out is very cute I thought. and rosie throwing out the slippers oh that was just perfect yeah. Mm-hmm. like yeah. so cute so dim so rosie and lee uh, and then the last thing we get is our proposal from Lucas. And there was a shocking lack of candles, I would say, for a <laughs> Hope Valley yeah. proposal. Yeah. I noticed no that too. Jar. <laughs> no pickle jar candles. Yeah. The local Bed Bath & Beyond is not sold out. <laughs> like with Lucas. Well, I mean, Jack with um, proposed, Jack. Yeah. With Jack. It took him yeah. all day to light the candles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess the the writers like let's don't do candles. I <laughs> <laughs> But when um, they involved like little Jack, that was so cute. That was sweet. Oh, that was cool. It was perfect. Did you guys keep rewinding to try to see when where he got the ring? Yeah, that's what, that's what I did. Yeah, because that's, like, oh, that's a big big old diamond. No, trust it to a little toddler. You know, he must have been like yeah. so nervous. Yeah, it was a big diamond. It was very big. I'm like, go Lucas. I'm like, yeah. he has the fun. So I guess why not? Go big yeah. go home. Um, uh, what do you think of the proposal, Ruth? Oh yeah, the proposal was, I mean, it was simple, and mm-hmm. which I will say I thought that was nice. I, I did appreciate that because um we don't we don't need an extravagant proposal at this point, I don't think. Um and I thought it was sweet. Yes, involving little Jack. That was that was just that made the proposal extra special. Yeah, and I I do think for the Hardys, this does give a sense of kind of comfort that we will get a season ten. I can't imagine them not having the wedding mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing. I, that I feel like as we said, most of the uh, the plot lines were kind of tied up fairly mm-hmm. well but but the you know kind of leave like this was kind of a cliffhanger even though she said yes mm-hmm. just in the sense yeah. of we all want to see what's going to happen next we all mm-hmm. want to see that, the wedding that's what i was doing sunday night on twitter so many people were like here's what i'm picturing her hair down <laughs> curly she's in a simple dress you know they were everybody's yeah. already planning the wedding and mm-hmm. jack walks down first you know and yeah, uh, you know what moment I loved in the proposal was the just the excited hope on Luke's fa- Lucas's face, Chris McNally's mm-hmm. face. He's such a good actor. I, anytime I see something come up, but he's going to be in it, I'll watch mm-hmm. it. Um, mm-hmm. He he just portrayed that. I mean, they talked about marriage, but he was still so kind of like a little bit anxious. Like, mm-hmm. will you? You know. Mm-hmm. Though, what did you think about the fact that he felt like he needed to call and ask her father for permission? Or is that just a courtesy, a kind thing to do? Because she's a, she's been a married woman before. She's yeah. independent. I, I feel think it, like it's, I do feel like it's kind of, like, I don't think there are very many people that if the dad said no for some reason, they, then you wouldn't still go, like you would make that stop you from getting married. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe if they were very young, then, then that would. But for someone like her, I think it's just kind of a formality. Yeah. Mm-hmm more than like and it was, actual permission and it was his first is his first I, i'm assuming his first marriage and That's proposal true. so i he wants to do it right and it was just yeah. sweet it would have been kind of fun to see that it probably would have been yeah. too expensive but it would have been cute to have seen him ask mm-hmm. and his get voice her. quivered when he says that he yeah. must be a father to little jack I'm like, why'd you do that to me? I mean, it, was sweet. <laughs> it, was it was cute. That was cute. That that was 
that I mean, just that moment that that little Jack was included in it because they are a packaged pair and he wants to be part of that family. He's not saying it's just you, me, Elizabeth. And he's like, I want to be a father to your son. I mean, he's a part of it. Um, and <laughs> when he's calling him buddy, here you go, buddy. Yes. Yeah, so so was dying. And they cut away yeah. to his face and he's happy when he yeah. you know, they said yes. And the little. Yeah, yeah. it was darling. I just could Did not we, stop watching that. Do we do it, buddy? And he's like, oh, it's so cute. I, more Highland next season. Yeah. Well, I thought it would be fun just in talking about the season as a whole before we close. I guess we should just give our rankings. Um, so one to 10, what do you think about this finale? Uh, I'll go first. I would give this one like an eight. I thought it was, it was pretty good. It was solid. It was, I mm-hmm. like a proposal, obviously. It had a lot of fun things. Not like one of my top favorites, but I enjoyed it um so mary what, what would you get one to ten um i had some nitpicky things like the pregnancy thing and um oh and we didn't talk about how um there was that tiny moment where where molly says i have to talk to you after driving bill so something oh, that yeah, happened, yeah i know i just realized that not having that question answered kind of brought my ranking down but maybe it's a cliffhanger so i'm at like mm-hmm. a nine and a half is that too optimistic mm-hmm. it was so sweet oh everyone has their rankings <laughs> Um, what about you, Ruth? Where'd you give it? Mine's an eight. I go, I go yeah. an eight. All right. And uh, Caroline? For the wood chopping alone, it has to be a 10. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Um, but just so to have the, uh, so let's just talk about the season as a whole before we close. Um, I thought we could each give one thing that we liked and one thing that didn't work for us. And mm-hmm. I'll, uh, I'll start. Uh, I think that everything with Rosemary and Lee was really good this season. I really enjoyed them working together, their dynamic, the cu- as they, uh, you know, sometimes wouldn't, wouldn't get along as they grew as a couple, the whole pregnancy thing was really great. Um, so th- they were a highlight of the season for me and then pretty much anything with the business. I just didn't like it. It was confusing. It wasn't, I mean, they should have just focused on just the coal mine opening because that was what was most important. I didn't need to know about the oil business and the, in the saloon and the, and everything with, uh, with Walden and I don't know, all of that was law to me. I would almost want to skip over it if I wasn't podcasting about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that they, it, cause if they had just focused on the mind when he did what he did, when Gowan did what he did, it would have been even more emotional because that's it. That's the, the whole focus of the season was on, is the mind going to open or not? Instead, it was kind of a little bit of an afterthought and with them going back to San Francisco, back and forth. And I don't know, but um, Mary, what do you think? Yeah, I'm right with you there. Um, that could have been a lot stronger harkening back to those who are now just maybe finding the show and watching from season one on. And the mine mm-hmm. was such a big part of it. And those women whose husbands and sons died that if they just focused on the mine, it really would have brought that all um, just that emotional climax, you know, and, and plot line, it would have been great. So yeah, some of the saloon stuff, I didn't quite understand what they were trying to do and how they were trying to catch them out. So that, but you know, intrigue, I was intrigued. Uh, so that was the down part. The, the best part were these solid relationships without too much drama moving forward with new things to, to do. Rosemary and Lee, Elizabeth and Lucas, Luca Beth, hashtag, uh, <laughs> just loved watching that grow. Mm-hmm. Caroline, what about you? Um, the um, Fiona storyline with the um with the oil business, I didn't care for this year. I think she got like too involved, and that kind of made things worse for mm-hmm. Lucas and Henry with the oil business. Yeah, and um, I guess they have the oil business. Um, and what I love most is seeing the families, um, seeing the can fields grow. Um, Lee and Rosie and Elizabeth and Lucas and little Jack and um, Nathan and Allie mm-hmm. and um, seeing Nathan and Lucas and Elizabeth in a good place like after the triangle and season 10 will be even better I think yeah Ruth what about you my my I think I would say my favorite part of the season as a whole was Gowan's storyline Mm. and his redemption I just for, for me 
especially that, as I said, that was my favorite, my favorite part of the season finale. Um, so I would say, and, and, and really, I'm going to be honest, that's surprising. That would not have been possibly if I wouldn't have had the way the season finale ended. Maybe I wouldn't have said that. I don't know. But um, I was intrigued by his storyline. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, um, I mean, there's probably a lot of things. There's a lot of things I could nitpick. But I'm just going to go down this road um, as to what um, what I didn't necessarily like. I would like to understand how it is that Carson was more of a character this season when he wasn't even there. <laughs> Yes. He kept because calling. Because in almost every single episode, he becomes this character. Faith's calling him up. People are saying, "Oh, we want, we want Carson. Oh, Carson's my doctor. Well, he's not there." And then, and, and it's just like, what's the deal? I, you know, and and then it's kind of like, okay, is he coming back or not? And so it's just, so I never, so I would just about get to the point where, okay. He won't be back next season. Oh, but now they've put this in there, and and I and so, and and of course for those for those who know the man who plays Carson's my employer. So I mean that that's part. Yeah, Paul Green is my employer. So he just had a baby. Course, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and I, and so I understand. I'm not. I'm not complaining. I understand the whole situation, but it's like okay. If you guys, I hope that you guys actually bring him back next season and give and build on. It's like, I mean, I was, I'm grateful that they didn't kill him off in the series. I am very mm -hmm. grateful to the writers for that, and they chose to include him. But it's like, how is it that he continued to be such a central character? So they better bring him back. If they bring him mm -hmm. back next season, then I will be cheering and then i will say that that was not that then, then i then i'm going to even nitpick about that <laughs> yeah i mean i could and see them a square yeah love, love square, square. <laughs> yeah. i could see them doing that though because they did keep his memory alive they did throughout they did. the mm -hmm. whole season you're right about they that did. so yeah. it wouldn't shock me to have him return i would yeah, love that i would love that i would love that, I I would love that. yeah i, I would love it. yeah mm -hmm. yeah I could see that as opposed to some of the other people that have left. Like we never heard almost nothing for, about Jesse and Clara, for instance. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. there was like an offhand, you know, oh, they're doing fine mm -hmm. or something. But right. yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. There were always phone calls from Carson or this or that. I know. I, know. I hope they are keeping that alive. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I first thought they were going to send Bill to see Carson. Yeah. And, Ooh, um, good idea. That's what I thought they were going to do. And then they yeah. send him to Union City instead. I'm like, they should have sent him to Carson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. Maybe, well, maybe they still will. You never know. No, mm -hmm. but, but, but that's so, so really, that's not so much my complaining. That's just me being like, you this better mean you're bringing him back. Don't mm -hmm. tease us like that. Um, I know sometimes people get confused. Why are you complaining? No, I'm complaining because if they're teasing me and they don't bring him back next season, then I'm then I'm a little bit frustrated yeah. because yeah. they've kept him alive so much during this season where he hasn't been. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying, writers, please bring him back. <laughs> please bring him back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do we all agree that season nine was an upgrade over season eight? What do you think? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Oh yeah, for the Gowan storyline alone, and for the mm -hmm. resolve of that triangle for so long. Mm -hmm. That's why that's... we don't need another one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so there we go. That is the season and the episode. Mary, thank you so much for coming on. This was a delight. Mm -hmm. My have pleasure. You, we'll, we'll definitely have you back. You were great, and. Uh, and so uh, what, why don't you tell people where they can find you on Twitter or uh, they can listen to your um, personal podcasts? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm at, um, so it's at underscore Mary Richards uh, on Twitter. And I also help run the Sleigh Bells and Mistletoe Christmas podcast. It's at SBMX, I think, or at Bell Slay. Mm -hmm. We're different things on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but just search for Sleigh Bells and Mistletoe Christmas podcast. What's that on Instagram? About? Oh, it's a, it's a year round Christmas podcast. Wow. We talk about Christmas stuff all year round. Wow. Uh, anything from decorating. Okay. I didn't know. To, 
Oh, it's so much fun. How did I not know about this? Okay. You know, Me too. We're... It's in, no. in Utah. Okay. And I know. <laughs> okay. We're Hallmark fans. I know. Okay. It's, you know, it's just me and my coworker, Ricky Meese from KSL. And we just kind of started it up about three years ago. And we just kind of, we're just kind of coming along. Mm, just okay. little podcast okay. talking about Christmas. I'm looking that up. Well, I'm we'll, looking we'll that talk. up. We'll talk, Mary. Okay. I know. I, I don't really want to get you on the show, actually. I yes. Was like, Ricky, do you know I, Rachel's I, reviews? And she's like, of course I do. So we'll talk <laughs> after this for sure. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Caroline, how can people follow you? On Twitter at me to Caroline R. Great. And Ruth? Uh, I, social media is Ruth Hill 74. And also um, my podcast is Media from the Heart. And my website is mydevotionalthoughts.net. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast at Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all over social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars for our podcast and for Mary's podcast, please. It helps us out so much. And, uh, and if you are watching on YouTube, please leave the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group, which is so much fun. Just this last weekend, we had the patrons got to hear my top 40, uh, TV rom-com list. And we had a great time talking about all the picks and it was, it was very fun. And we have some very exciting watch alongs and, uh, Q and A's and things like that in, uh, that are in the works coming this summer. So sign up for the Patreon. You won't regret it. And then also we have the merch store, which has tons of Hardy's inspired merch. So definitely take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much to all of you for the whole season. And uh, thanks everybody for listening. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.